The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. Reaper Apparel offers a casual line of superb fit, finish, and comfort. We design for those who refuse to die slowly and choose to live untamed. For those who aren't afraid to face the dark, for the ones that thrive in it, and for those who can appreciate life through a grim lens. That's Reaper Apparel Company. Go to the link in the description of this episode, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. I have hats, I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, water bottles, notebooks, you name it, I've got it. The description and the link for that will be in the description of this episode. Also, right now, if you use the promo code WELCOME, I will give you 5% off of your first purchase. That's the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, the Rod Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Tactical Brotherhood. All American Made Apparel, which helps support the Second Amendment. You can also find all this in the description of this episode with the link Tactical Brotherhood. Part of every proceed does go to helping veterans, as it is a very good cause. All American-made products made right here in Minnesota. Go and check them out. Use the promo code PATRIOT15 to get 15% off your purchase. Now, let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. This is, as always, your host, Mike Bono. I have a phenomenal episode for us today. My guest today comes to us. uh, He is a Bethany uh, student right now. He is a senior getting ready to graduate in the spring. He is a football player, but he is from Montana. So we're going to get into how in the hell he found Bethany College from Montana. Jack Gilman joins the show. Jack, thanks for joining, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's going to be a great time. Oh, absolutely, man. Um, so first and foremost, you know, being from Montana, what what was the recruiting process like to get you to come to good old West Virginia? Um, so starting out, there's not a whole lot of kids from my area specifically that go on to play college sports. And, you know, as a little boy, you have this dream of I want to go play college football. I want to go to the NFL. So kind of starting out um, – being from a super small school, it was tough because not a lot of people do move on to that next level. So it was kind of finding information to, as to the process of understanding how to get recruited to the next level. And once I kind of found out a lot of that stuff, put myself out there with film, stuff like that, it was kind of just a, a wait game, wait for school. Kind of like, it was kind of like fishing for, for offers, essentially. <laughs> you, you wait, you throw your, your line out there and you, you wait for someone to bite. So. Um, I actually originally, um, found out about Bethany, uh, via email and I was going to visit Widener University in, uh, Philadelphia. And, um, I got an email from Bethany and I was like, well, if I'm already going to be flying out to that side of the country anyways, I might as well give Bethany a look while I'm out there and fell in love with it. And, uh, Falcone gave me a visit and showed me all over the campus and just couldn't, couldn't resist but to come. So... I, I bet with Johnny giving you that uh, tour with how fast he goes, it took like 30 seconds with, you know, him going, you know, a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was, it was a good tour too. The the biggest thing that was for me was I just went and looked at a, a campus in Philadelphia and, you know, being from a right. town of 700 people going to, to inner city Philadelphia to look at a massive university. It was, it was kind of culture shock for me. So coming down to Bethany, it was nice because, you know, it's a small campus. It's kind of not in a big city. It was kind of felt like home for me and it has been ever since. Yeah. Bethany is super close to home for me. I grew up in the town of Fallensby. I'm sure you've seen it and been in it. uh, If you blink, you miss it. Um, In West Virginia, (laughs) uh, about 20 minutes away from campus. Uh, So Bethany was, was a choice for me. It wasn't my first choice. I'll tell everyone that I've said that for years, Uh, but for the longest time, I, w- I was going to be a mountaineer. I was going to be a, a WVU in Morgantown. Uh, I was a swimmer, so I was an athlete, you know, being recruited. And then uh, an unfortunate football injury uh, in my senior year of high school 
Uh, everybody but Bethany dropped their scholarship for me. So that kind of made it the clear cut winner. You know, I'm going where the money is and Mm -hmm. you know, I'm glad I did. Uh, I met a lot of great people. Uh, Johnny is one of the, the, those people. And, you know, it, it, it was a great time. Bethany, you know, for the new listeners out there and people who don't know uh, Bethany College, you could walk across the entire campus in five minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty easy walk. <laughs> it's, it's not a big school. It's it's not at all. And uh, it's you're right. It's that small town feel. You know, Fallsby, where I grew up, had 2,700 people in it. And that they know everybody knows everybody. You being from Montana, you know, 700 people, you know, obviously a little bit smaller than than what and then Fallsby. And I honestly was surprised when I looked up how many people there were in Fallsby, West Virginia, uh, mm-hmm. because every time I tell people where I'm from, they're like, where I'm like an hour outside of Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's just the easiest way to explain it. Do you right. have that? Do you have that back home in Montana, where where you're from? Like, all right, it's, it's close to this major city. Yeah, and that's pretty much. I I kind of go. You divide the state into four four corners, and I say I'm in the the southwest corner of Montana because it's the especially for people out here. I tell you, I tell you, I'm from Sheridan, Montana. You're like, okay, I know where Montana is, but no <laughs> clue otherwise. No. So the the best way to describe it now is uh, that TV show came out Yellowstone. Yeah, I, I live near Yellowstone Park. Um, okay, n- near being relative terms, but I live near Yellowstone Park. So that's that's what how I get people to understand where I'm from now is that that TV show. So. Hey, you know, I, I I see the commercials and everything for it. My wife and I are we fought it because we're like, oh, we're not going to jump on these trendy shows and whatnot. Now we keep seeing. I'm like, you know what? I got to know now, this show looks phenomenal. Uh, I got to watch it. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's where that's at. So, you know, being at Bethany, what are you studying there at Bethany now? Uh, I study business management and um, next semester, I actually am thinking about coming back to do the the MBA so I can uh, get my master's in a year too. So, okay. But. Uh, plans for, with that after college, what are you, uh, what are you planning on doing? Uh, after college, um, I plan on returning home. Um, there's a few different ideas that I have that I could do, um, mostly stuff that I've done in the summers um, prior to coming to Bethany and while going to school. Um, one of them being uh, I worked on a water well drilling rig, um, like drilling wells for uh, for people's houses and stuff like that. And uh, I also did a summer um, working for an excavation crew, um, building roads and uh, digging foundations for houses. So those are two things that I, I really enjoy. I, I, I like working outside and like with my hands a lot. So maybe work something in that and then start my own someday. But who knows? Hey, you know, I, when I went to, to Bethany, being a comedian wasn't the, like, I'm going to go get a degree and be a comedian. <laughs> uh, like that right. wasn't, you know, I went, uh, I originally started as a business uh major out there business administration and then um so i applaud you because the economics classes um they kicked my ass um, they're tough they are it, tough <laughs> it, it was it was to the point you know that after my sophomore year one year you know, after my uh first semester of my sophomore year my advisor came up to me and was like all right mike um i like you and you know we want as many business majors as we can but right now you have two options um Stay being a businessman major, and you're probably going to fail out. Or uh, you can change your major, and we can just re- hit the reset button. I was like, I'm paying a lot of money to come here. Why don't we hit that reset button? And yep. sports broadcasting it was the was the goal for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I d- I did actually complete enough classes to have a business minor. So you know you, it, you know it it worked out in in the end. But yeah, the, those economics classes that's I that's I, not for me. That you do, yeah. And, and I tell everybody that you know you don't become a stand up comic by being book smart. So that's just one of the things that um I I, I always like to tell people. But yeah. You're a two sport athlete out there, right? You you football and track, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yep. So I gotta know, you were there pre pandemic and then during the pandemic. So what was it like playing football pre pandemic and then insert COVID nineteen and then the pandemic? So take me through a little bit of the, the differences there. 
Okay, so um, fall 2019, um, college freshman come in, and uh, I had never played 11-man football before. Back home, Mm -hmm. we're in such a small community. We played uh, six-man football. It's really popular in Texas and in, like, other smaller, small population states. So coming out and uh, there's – 10 more people on the field than normal. It was, it was kind of a, again, like I was just like, I don't even know what I'm doing out here now. So there's quite the, uh, the learning curve with that for me, just trying to understand, you know, you watch NFL and college on TV, but like actually being out on the field with that many more people um, playing the game that you love, it's kind of, it was kind of a, a tough uh, learning curve for me just cause I had never done that before, but it was um, super I, I really enjoyed it. It's I've stuck stuck it out for that same reason. I love the sport and love the the community and and the team. So it's been uh, been a fun process. But uh, so coming in, um, the biggest things that were tough for me was the accommodation to the weather and the temperature. Because back home, <laughs> it'll get it'll get hot. It'll get ninety degrees, but there's no humidity. And so coming coming to Bethany, West Virginia, where there's 97% humidity and it's 110 on the turf, I was just dripping. It was awful. <laughs> uh, you, you led me right into my next point is the culture shock with the weather from yeah. Montana to West Virginia. Uh, you know, I, I grew up, like I said, in West Virginia. I'm used to the weather changes and everything like that. I th- thought I knew weather changes and then I moved to Ohio um (laughs) which you wouldn't think being the next state over like it would be that drastic of a change no Ohio has its own weather like it's it's completely I don't understand it 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 could be you could have all four seasons in one day that's that's the type of where where I live at now uh so the, what what was the biggest other than the, the heat and everything the the culture shock weather wise from Montana to West Virginia? Um, honestly, the amount that it rains in West Virginia too. Back home in Montana, I think if we received a little bit less precipitation than we do, we'd be considered a desert. Most of our our precipitation comes from the snow in the winter, so it doesn't rain very often in the summer. And and when it does, it does, but it rains. I mean, probably five days out of seven of the week in West Virginia. And it just, it kind of blows my mind that just how different it is because of that. But yeah. Yeah. Accommodating to the temperature, I think was the biggest part though. It's just so much warmer feeling outside. Oh yeah. It's, it's that hurts you. You can't breathe type of humidity out there. Um, I remember, you know, when I played football in high school, you know, the two a days in the summer that I, I was, I dreaded, the that the those two weeks in in summer because it was like i i gotta learn how not to breathe and because it's so humid that and it you know at different times you know i remember our coaches trying to toughen us up a little bit came out put the water jug on the 50 and goes all right who's gonna be the first sissy to come and get a drink of water (laughs) and it's just like i mean I'm. We just walked onto the field, coach, and I am drenched in sweat. Like I literally, we haven't done a drill. We walked from the locker room to the practice field, and I'm, I'm drenched. That I'm a sweater, right. coach. I might, I might need a little sip. If you, wanna, you know, so. <laughs> And, you and know. that's one thing I find out a lot is even like, you know, you stay in shape all summer, you get ready for season, but then even still, when I come back, I feel like I'm out of shape again. Just because yeah. of the the temperature and it's it's that much warmer and because out of sh- being in shape back home at at five thousand feet and it's only seventy degrees out eighty degrees out is a whole lot different than than sea level and uh, very hot <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so you know, growing up in Montana, um, I've never been there. I do. I it's one of the states that's on my bucket list of you know places my wife and I do want to do want to visit. Uh, what, what is there to do in Montana? Um, so a lot of people, um, hunt and fish, um, and I do a lot of hiking personally. I enjoy kind of going out, um, and just looking out in the woods. Um, there's a few trails and then the, the tallest peak that's in my County sits at 11,000 feet. And so, um, 
not last summer, but two summers ago, I went and hiked up to the top of that. And it's about, I think, 12 or 14 miles round trip. Long, long day of a hike, but beautiful view at the top. You get to look down into all the valleys that you want to. So it was just, uh, that's one of my favorite things is just going out and like being out in the, the untamed uh, wild is the best, the best part. Yeah, that's kind of like the the I guess the allure for my wife and I. We we I, I grew up in West Virginia. Uh, you know, I love the country. She grew up in the country in Ohio, and you know, it's we we want to get to a place where it's like you know what we always say like hey you know what with everything going on if we could just get like a cabin in the woods and live off the land sign us up because like that's. <laughs> That's where we want to be. And then Montana seems like a great place, like I said. But I will say this, uh, watching uh, College Game Day when they were in Montana in negative five degree weather. And there was people shirtless at the, at, you know, cheering. I don't, I don't understand that kind of hurt you cold. You know what I mean? Like, it, does it get that cold that often there? Or is that just kind of like a one-off? Oh no, that's that's pretty often the deal. Um, I think that's one of the bigger reasons that they wanted to come was so that they could have that like cold game um, weather. But um, it's typically, I mean, from in the winter, it'll go from an average of like twenty degrees as the high during the day to kind of when you get into the deeper winter, like January and February, it's more kind of teens in the as the high or even negatives. Um, I remember I looked at the weather a couple of days ago and it was supposed to be like negative seven at night. So yeah, it gets down, down into the negatives, negative teens pretty often, especially when it's a heavy and hard winter. I mean, you're, you're not going to go very far <laughs> no, <laughs> because no. it's just that cold. That's, that sounds like, you know what? We're staying in today. I cancel all the plans. That's just yep. whatever we had to do. I don't need to do it. It's not that important. Uh, cause you know, I, I remember, you know, being at Bethany when I was there, um, girl I dated at the time, uh, was from New Jersey. Uh, so not quite used to the West Virginia heat and, <laughs> a, a, as we, we were talking about now at one point in time at, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon, it was 118 degrees outside. And like, we were making plans for like the later that evening and that, and like seven o'clock rolls around and, you know, she asked me if I thought she would need a jacket out. I'm like, where the hell do you think we're at? Like it was 118 degrees three hours ago. Like, like no. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So, so that's two extremes right there. You know, the, the negative seven. When I see a negative by the number, no, I'm not going outside. Like. How do you guys deal with that type of cold there? Um, I mean, you just kind of, you tough it up. My, uh, my superintendent in high school, he was originally, he um, taught up in Alaska for the longest time. And so we, we only had, it, it snows a little bit here and the whole, the whole country shut down. You know what I mean? All the schools are yeah. delayed and we only had one, two hour delay while I was in high school. The rest of the time you just got to school when you got there and, I mean, it, you made sure you wore a warm coat just in case your uh, your your truck broke down or something on the way. <laughs> yeah, it it's just it's the whole mentality, I guess, is just different out there. Yeah, um, as to to dealing with the cold and just how it all operates. Yeah, yeah, y'all are bred different. I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> I'm not. I don't think I'm bred for the cold. My my wife loves winter. Like she was, she loves winter, and she loves snow. And I don't understand it because I, I hate the snow. Um, I, I want it to snow two days a year. And that's Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And after that, it could go away. Um, yeah. But she she can't wait. Like, this time of the year, she's like, I look over at her on her phone. She's on the Weather Channel. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm looking to see when it's going to snow next. I was like, why are you looking that far in advance? Like, they can predict if it's going to snow that far in advance. Like, is it going to snow tomorrow? No. Cool. Like, let's wait another day and wait. Like, it's just – but she gets excited, and she never understood why I liked summer. Well, I'm more of a fall guy. Like, this time of year when, you know, it's – you know, 60s, 70s, maybe, you know, and it's got that crisp feel to the air. I like that. 
Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, she's like, you know what? You're, you're a sociopath if you like the heat, and the and I don't understand why you like the heat because you can put more clothes on. You can only take so much off, and that's right. kind of where you know it's to the point. Of like, yeah, I guess that makes sense, but I don't know. I just I I've never been a winter person. I feel like you have to in Montana though with that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it kind of comes with the the contract of living there essentially. <laughs> the contract so, of living there. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's the thing too is for me being in West Virginia now for for college, it almost feels wrong that here we're in the middle of November and there's there's no snow on the ground hardly. It'll yeah. it snowed like maybe once, but it melted off by the end of the day. Yeah. And so for me, I'm like I'm used to seeing snow at the end of October and then it sticks around pretty much. Because once it does snow, the temperature stays so so low that it doesn't melt until the spring, and so you'll have snow for for two months straight. And uh, just that difference too of not having snow this time of year just it almost feels wrong to me <laughs> <laughs> because there is none on the ground. But yeah, I, I think you just solidified when my wife listens to this that uh, we are probably going to be looking into Montana as a final destination. We're just saying that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but uh, so kind of like me, you know, everyone um, gets on me because I am a uh, for uh, pro sports fan. There's no pro sports teams in West Virginia. So I am a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. Um, and my sports teams are all over the map. Like I, I, I'm people are like, you're just a bad whack. I'm like, no, I've actually liked these teams. I don't have a pro team in West Virginia. So this is who I have to deal with. Um same thing in Montana. So who who do you kind of root for for your pro teams being from Montana? Is there like somebody everybody goes to, or is it just like pick a spot in the map, throw a dart, and see what teams right. goes to that? Um, so kind of majority, there's like three teams that people root for from Montana. The kind of northwest side kind of all roots for Seattle. The east eastern half kind of all roots for uh, for Minnesota. And then kind of in between, there's a mix. And then a lot of the south part of Montana is a Denver fans. So because kind of no matter which way you go off of each side of the state, if you go for about a half a day's drive, then you'll make it to one of those cities. So but my dad um, originally was born in Montana. And then his my grandfather and um, their family moved to Denver. And so I'm a I'm a Broncos fan. Kind of sad this time of, this sick. time around this, this <laughs> season. But uh Tough season for you guys going right now. Been uh, very tough. I, I gotta say, I had high hopes with the Russell Wilson trade and everything like that. And I, I don't, I just don't know what's going on in Denver. Like, I'm a big sports fan, and I, I, I follow it. And I was just like, what the hell has happened to Russell Wilson? Like, why is he? How did he forget how to play quarterback? Like, that's what yeah. I want to know. Well, and you like you watch. I watch a lot of like film breakdowns and stuff because kind of same as you. I want to understand like why is this not working out? And I think a big part of it is I think they they hired Nathaniel Hackett trying to get Aaron Rodgers to come, yeah. and so when that didn't work out, okay, Plan B, let's get someone else, somebody a veteran that we can try and get. And so I think when they got Russell Wilson, they still it was kind of a, a mission failed successfully where they got a good veteran quarterback, but they didn't necessarily get the one they wanted. And I think a lot of it is just trying to figure out, you know, Hackett's a first-year head coach. Russell's in a new system. I think a lot of it is just trying to figure out how to play together and how to be successful at that. But it's it's tough. Tough to watch sometimes, but still love my Broncos. <laughs> uh, I'm a Buccaneers fan. I had decades of disappointment. Um, and then insert Tom Brady, and um, <clears throat> who I can't stand as a quarterback. <laughs> Uh, but I'd rather have him playing for my team than against it, I guess. Um, yeah, fair. <laughs> that's like when that happened and he signed with Tampa, like my wife was just looking at me like, hey, you're excited, Tom Brady. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not. I can't. I, 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 I refuse. I refuse mm-hmm. to cheer for Tom Brady. Like, I can't do it. I grew up an hour outside of Pittsburgh. I always root for the Steelers. He played the Steelers every year. He kicked their ass every year. And I can't, I can't in good conscience cheer for this man. And she was like, oh, so I should cancel the Brady jersey? I already, I already, pers- I was like, if you bought me a Brady jersey, we're going to fight. I'm telling you right now, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to fight. She didn't, 
she was joking, but I was, right. but but yeah, and yeah, but now she's just and now I'm back to yelling at him because I like Russell. I don't know what happened in Tampa this year. Like I yeah. had, I had such high hopes for the season. You get Julio Jones. Godwin and Mike Evans and Fournette. I was like, how can we screw this up? And in typical Tampa fashion, they have. Uh, right. <laughs> but I have high hopes because the division sucks this year. So um, that's yeah. my And opinion. that's one thing Tampa has going for it. And Denver does not. You know, every, every team in Denver in the AFC West is – every team is a loaded team that's ready to go. Yeah. You know, the, the Raiders – I can't say too much because they they've beat us two times this year. But I mean, other than that, that all the other teams are they're they're good. So it's it's yeah. tough. I get it. Yeah, I, I was I was nervous after at the start of the season, and my wife just she leaves the room uh, on Sundays uh, when football's on because she's knows there's going to be a lot of yelling. Like I, we have a lot of animals here. I, like I have five cats and a dog, and they're pretty used to Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. Now Saturdays for college football, me yelling at the TV. And it's to the point now, like I realize by like halftime, I look around, I'm like, there was a room full of people and animals when I started the game. Like I get into the zone, I guess. And like, nobody's here. It's just me now yelling to myself. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's kind of how it is at home for me too. Is my 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 brother? You know, he played sports too, but he's not really into watching like the NFL or anything. And my mom will come out and she'll she'll watch with us. But usually by the end of the game, especially by the end of the day, it's just my dad and I jumping up and down in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <Yeah. laughs> absolutely. All right, but Jack, we are running down near the end of the episode here. I do got to get this segment in because if not, the manager of the show, uh, Johnny Fitty Falcone, will. Kill me, and that is the Fast Fitty Five. Five random questions from the wonderful manager of the podcast, Johnny Fitty Falcone. And Jack, he sent me these uh, this morning. So um, we're going to kind of read these together. They're for the new listeners out there. It's a rapid fire, but um, you can elaborate if you need to. So if you are ready, man, we'll, we'll get going. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Question number one. Is building a snowman underrated or overrated? Uh, I think it's underrated, honestly. Just the the um, the classical feeling of building a snowman. You don't really do it too often anymore. So I think when you do, it's it's important. Okay. All right. Uh, question two: Is kayaking fun? I enjoy it. It's it's, it's a fun activity to be outside. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. This this one's gonna make or break our new friendship here, uh, Jack. Are pickles overrated or underrated? I think they're overrated. All right. Uh, I, I hate pickles. <laughs> if anybody's watched my comedy, I have a whole skit on how I hate pickles. Uh, but okay. <laughs> question number four, and uh, it's a typical Johnny question. Who wins in a straight fight, The Undertaker from the WWE or Mike Tyson? Uh, that's tough, but I'd have to go with the real fighter, Mike Tyson, I think. Okay, I, 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 I respect that. Uh, question number five. Would you enjoy taking a scenic train ride for three days across Canada? I think so. I actually, I, I am uh, in New York right now for Thanksgiving break, and I took a train from, from Pittsburgh to New York. So I really enjoyed that. So I'm sure a, a train ride back would be fun as well. <laughs> Just a detour through Canada this time. Okay. I That was the Fast 55. I can respect that. I'm so glad you went overrated on pickles because I absolutely hate pickles. Uh, yeah, you know, I I have a whole skit about it in, in my in my stand up routine and it normally separates the crowd. I, I know I try to do it kind of early in the set just to be like, all right, ha- who are going to be the people I'm going to talk to for the rest of this show? And I hate it. I, I hate them. Like my wife makes fun of me because a she has to special order everything when we order out anything. If I get a burger or anything, she's like, oh, now we got to wait an extra fifteen freaking minutes for you to get no pickles on your burger. 
She goes, God forbid you just pick them off. I was like, the taste is still there. It's not like it's just a texture thing. I hate the taste of pickles. Yeah, it's, and I, I've, I've tried them and I, I honestly had never had a pickle until about a year ago. And I had tried, tried different types finally. Cause I was like, okay, maybe they're, maybe they are as good as people say. And you know, the taste, it just, it's a lot of the taste and a lot of the texture. I don't, I don't enjoy it. The, the crunchier pickles are better, I feel like, but we're also got to think that better is still a very low subpar, uh, setting <laughs> i always polish a turd it's still a turd and that's yep. just no and you know she's uh she uh, okay quick story before we add this like she will take a pickle right out of the jar and just start munching on it like in front of me and uh-huh. like she's she's just doing it and then she'll like come in i'm like you think i'm gonna kiss you after that you can go wash your Brush your teeth. Do get away from me. Like yep. no, don't. Mm-mm, mm-mm, no, I love you to death. I will punch you in the mouth if you try to kiss me with a pickle breath. No way. Like that's just <laughs> like and, uh, she's uh, she's she's used to my antics in that. Now she married a comedian. She knows what she's getting into. Right. And she tries so hard, but she's just like she'll just sit in front of me and like just chomp on it and just direct eye contact the whole time. And yep, I'm just like she knows it bothers you. I'm like you're part of the problem in this world, and why pickles are still a thing. Like you're part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I got off on a little tangent there uh, at the end about pickles because Fitty had to put that in there. He knows my uh, dislike for pickles as well. Uh, but that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. I want to thank. Uh, oh my god, I completely forgot. Hey, uh, Jack, I give every guest this opportunity at the end. <laughs> it's been a long day for me, everybody out there. I give every guest this opportunity at the end of the show. If there's anything you want to get out there, uh, why people should visit Montana, or a good message, or if you have anything that you got working right now that you want to get out there, I'm going to give you about a minute, and the floor is yours every time. Uh, the floor is yours, my man. Um, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, in life, just take positivity with you. You know, there's a lot of bad things that happen in the world, but at the end of the day, you got to be positive and keep a smile on your face. I think that's the biggest two things I could say. So have a smile and be positive. Hey, hey you know what? I, I, I love it. Absolutely love it when people just have a good message. At the end, when I give them that minute, sorry, I almost forgot about you there, man. Like I'm just, uh, I'm so scatterbrained today. As everyone can see, um, I've been. This isn't a sponsorship at all. I've been drinking this like all day, a monster, and I've had two cups of coffee. Like <laughs> I, I am to say, I'm running on fumes is the understatement of the year, and it's not even. Uh, uh, the show's pre-recorded for everybody out there, so it's not even Thanksgiving yet. So, haha, gotcha. Uh, but. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm running on fumes, and it's fun. Uh, But (laughs) that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. I want to thank my guest, uh, Jack Gilman, for joining the show. This was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about Montana and probably will end up residing there when my wife listens to this show. Uh, But as always, if you enjoyed the show, be a friend and tell a friend. If you didn't, tell them anyways. They might like it just because you didn't. That's going to do it for me. And I will see y'all next week. The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. Energy drinks made for gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. For gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. Go to the link in the description where you can find the best energy drinks out there. Less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Also... No jitters and no crash afterwards. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my favorite sponsor of the show, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel made for the everyday golfer. We might not go out and shoot a six under par. We're probably going to shoot a six over par, but... This is going to give us the gear that's going to help us rock it on and off of the course. Go to the link in the bio. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off there as well.